Hey, folks, real quick, if you're not doing anything right now, go over to YouTube.com and search Apocalypse Soon Podcast. You'll see this podcast YouTube video page. Go ahead and hit the subscribe and the ding notification bell, and you'll get everything you want from this podcast every week. And if you want the podcast the day it comes out, go to Patreon.com slash Eddie Pep Podcast. And you can get the, this video, this podcast, the day that it comes out. Plus, you can get some exclusive stand-up sets from the man himself. And now, let's get into the show. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in the park, no longer raining. The man, he's sitting next to me. His Apple Watch is in full effect. The alerts are going off, off, off. But he's here, in the park. It's a beautiful day. Make it loud for him. He's got a purple hat from New York. It's Eddie. Hey everybody, welcome to Michael Episode of the Podcast with No Upside. I have my dog Charlotte here. I don't know if she, I think she is in the picture. I, she, I took Charlotte with me, and if you see a little gray terrier, uh, terrier mix, um, actually I had the DNA done on my dog. Really? Where we wipe her uh, mouth for saliva and then you mail it. Yes. You know, and she came back. It just said, this is a dog. <laughs> and it was so good. You know, I did the DNA. Have you ever done the DNA? No, I want to. Well, I've done the DNA to find it. And it just came back. It said, you are an asshole. <laughs> and I'm like, great. I paid $150 for that. I yeah. don't need that kind of shit, you know? Yeah, I would imagine it would be like, you're 73% you're asshole. <laughs> and then, uh, the rest is exactly, sweetheart. exactly, exactly. But anyway, buddy, it's so funny because we were here last week, and it was rainy and cold, and we have the opposite. We have this L.A. quote unquote winter. It is seventy five today. Mm -hmm. It's gorgeous, and I think it's too hot. You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's it is beautiful. In the shade. It's I'll, beautiful in the shade. I'll tell you what, the rain has stopped, but the airplanes keep going. You know, the airplanes, they keep passing well, over. Well, we are, just so everybody knows, we're by uh, Burbank Airport, which is called Bob Hope Airport. Yep. Uh, Bob Hope, as you know, famously, when uh, the Japanese were interred during World War II after Pearl Harbor, oh. Bob Hope bought up their land because he's a scumbag or was a scumbag. <laughs> <laughs> that is very true. Bob Hope took advantage of the internment of Japanese uh, citizens who were interred because the U.S. government uh, thought, oh, my God, we, you know, we can't have yeah. people who've actually been living here for years mm -hmm. uh, have uh, a life here. So well, there, the U.S. government always does a better safe than sorry. You better know, safe than we sorry. We probably should imprison these people just in case. And Bob Hope was right there to yeah. grab up their land. Uh, by all accounts, he was uh, uh, not a very nice man. Yeah, I always, the only thing I know about Bob Hope is he liked to carry around a golf club <laughs> a lot of places. And uh, that's about it. He would murder geese with that golf club. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was W.C. Fields. Do you know W.C. Fields, who I loved? I love W.C. Fields. Are you it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm aware. <laughs> <laughs> Get this kid away from me. It's great voice. Amazing voice. Well, he also, he also really nailed it on the head with Philadelphia. His tombstone says, all in all, it's better than Philadelphia. <laughs> Is that true? I believe so. <laughs> I hope so. At least that's what I've heard. And I think that nails it. Uh, that's amazing. I, I have a book called, like, The History of Stand-Up, and it's got Bob Hope in there. And uh, he's one of the guys in there. stand-up. Well, he, well I, he, I, apparently he was doing a lot of blackface performances. Is that and, right? Oh, yeah. And well, he, he's that type of guy. And in the book, it's the only reason he stopped doing back blackface is because one show, he was out of shoe polish, and he actually did pretty good. And so he was like, eh, maybe I don't need it anymore. Is that true? <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Same reason I stopped doing blackface. Is, I, yes. I was out of shoe polish. I remember polish. I was bringing you over some brown shoe polish, and yes. you said, forget it, and I just... <laughs> turned around <laughs> yeah my face with the blonde hair and you know it's uh it was a look it, yeah. was, it was a real look uh, it was a real look <laughs> so let's talk let's before we get into some of our usual insanity uh let's talk about how the week has been going for you 
Um, what have you been up to? Good week. I've been uh, I've been uh, at the improv a lot of days this week. You know, just getting berated behind the soundboard. It just it feels right. You know, it's it's a good time. Do you uh, get yelled at a lot there? Oh, uh, I mean, I wouldn't By say who you, the the owners. No, no, no. By a, a specific uh, comics uh, will. <laughs> I'll, Let's keep their names. I will. I will under wraps <laughs> because yeah, it'll be like uh, I have. A God lot of knows their careers aren't going well as it is. I mean, if they're getting satisfaction out of yelling at the sound guy at the improv, you know, it's probably not going great. No, but the oh, yeah, really. I'll get guys that'll hand me two walk-up songs, and okay. then I'll play the first walk-up song, and they'll go, "Man, turn that shit off. Who's playing that?" And then they'll make fun of me. And then they'll go play a real song, and then I play the second walk-up song. Right. And that's happened. That happens probably w- once a shift. Of- oh, but oh, it's not intentional. No, it is intentional. They'll, they'll give All me. All right. So that, but then they're not yelling at you. It's a bit. Yeah, they're doing a bit. They're doing a, definitely doing a bit, and uh, it's always so. Fun. You're not getting yelled at for real. No, no. Am no. I right, or what's going I on? I mean, there's a little bit of berating sometimes, you know? It'll be uh, yeah. guys going, what's wrong with this mic? I don't like the way this mic sounds. And I'll be like, oh, there's a mic right there. Just grab it. No, you grab it. I'm like, all right, hey, I got you. It's right here. And it sounds exactly the same, and I, I just go, it sounds good now. <laughs> but uh, it's been good. I uh, I went up to the mountains uh, when? And, uh, yesterday. And Where'd I, you go? I, I went up to uh, the uh, Angeles National Forest with my daughter. Oh, and uh, what we like to do is we'll go up there and we'll find granite dead rock. bodies. Yeah, dead bodies. No, and there's a lot of people who were dumped in Angeles. Yes, Los Angeles, Angeles National Park. It's close. It's uh, it's up by Tahunga, which apparently uh, the Sons of Anarchy is based off of people living in Tahunga. Got a big gang. I, well, shout out to the sh- sons of Anna. <laughs> shout out to them. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, they would dump bodies up there for sure. A lot of those motorcycle gangs and stuff. And uh, oh, But God. we go up there and we look for fossils that are in rocks. And so we'll just go up there and just break rocks. <laughs> Have you rocks ever found up. like Dorothy Stratton or some other famous <laughs> no, model? No, not dead? yet. But you know, <laughs> Honey, <laughs> it'd be funny. Like, uh, honey, I want you to see there's a model. Because they, <laughs> I would no. the reason I mentioned that in the Angeles... National Forest is because I um, I was watching a true crime thing. Thank God I'm off of the true crime kick. Oh, yeah. You, you beat it. I, I didn't beat it. Yeah, I don't want to say it, but I'm not want, like I'm not fucking going home and watching that shit. Yeah, Thank yeah. Thank God. Uh, but one of the ones I was watching, there was a woman who, a photographer, like coaxed into this area to film and then he murdered her oh and my dumped God. her in the uh, you know the typical photographer by the way that reminds me if you were getting headshots done yes. here in LA and the and this is for women mostly 95% uh, do not if they say well meet me in Angeles forest it'll be beautiful headshots done just be careful yeah yeah yeah. just be careful and make sure you get a good price and and also you know go back and forth on you know uh pricing yeah yeah, you know because some of the deals are good like <laughs> Some of the deals are good. Like you, a that dog, is funny. A dog, that watch her do it. A dog just peed on my camera stand. Uh, he at, told us what he thought of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> a dog just peed on the tripod, <laughs> on the camera tripod. Oh. Look, this is what we do here. Is not, <laughs> and Charlotte's now peeing <laughs> where. That dog peed in now. That's right. Kick it up, Charlotte. Kick it up. She does that bull. <laughs> yeah, Charlotte. Yeah. Oh. Well, uh, you'll have to get it martinized. But I, what I wanted to say mm-hmm, mm-hmm. is that some of the photographers will have a special if they kill. Like, they'll say, 100 off if you let me kill you yes. and, and have my way with you. And yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. you know, is that a good deal? I mean, you're not going to be around. mm for the headshots. Yeah, it won't be right for the savings either. You know, that's the, the whole thing. Uh, but Maybe you know, it isn't a good deal then. I worry. I mean, that's one of the reasons that I like filming in public 
with you, you know, just, <laughs> just you never know when I might lunge at you. Well, I know you're you get unhinged, you know, and you've been a good boy for so long, you know, and the I know the murderous tendencies tend to. I think we peak. all have murderous tendencies, you sure. know, and and I don't want to <laughs> brag that I have one. Um, no, you know what it is though with that kind of stuff. I don't really have any kind of like I I I get angry, mm-hmm. but I I. I don't know. I know there's a thin line with all this stuff, but I, I, I can't even think of like hitting someone. You know yes. what I mean? Like well, yeah, punching you're punching someone. I've never pun- No, I, I did punch one guy once. Yes, a little uh, left jab. It was a fight with a neighbor. Yeah, but um, and then he had you in a two-hour headlock. I remember. You, oh, I've me. told this story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah you yeah. lose track, folks, of all these stories. I mean, we're at a... But that is, was it. I'm fucking 65, one little left jab. Yeah. No, I'm the same. No no punches, no uh, no punching you either too? way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, just we're not violent my people, violence, but... Yeah, go ahead. It's direct, my violence is directed either am, ambiguously or internally. You know, it's either at me or somebody in the general. What does that mean? Oh, ambiguously, I don't think it's the right word. It's a uh, general hostility. Yeah, a general hostility. Diffuse. I, I, uh, towards institutions and uh, just the unfairness there of There are some God. great institutions out there. <laughs> yes, there are. No, I'm talking about institutions where you can recover from... Yeah, uh, mental illness. Yeah, I, I was in a mental institution for a little while because it was a Groupon. Oh, it was a Groupon, and I'm going to tell you something. This mental institution, it was the Angeles Forest Mental Institution, oh. right next to Dorothy Stratton's body, a model who was killed. <laughs> and it was they had the best chef. They. It was like a chili Japanese fusion. Oh wow. Chili in South America. That's impressive. And and Japanese fusion <laughs> and it was I mean I was dissociating from uh-huh. my uh self. So yes. I had like three or four selves at that point, but the food Not to brag or anything. <laughs> well, not to brag. <laughs> not to brag. You also you also, if you put your mind to it out there, you can get one, two, three, four different cells. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. know, I like the idea of a hospital naming uh, the hospital after someone's body, <laughs> the Dorothy Stratton's Body Mental Health Institute. By the way, if people know Dorothy Stratton, <laughs> it was a famous thing because the director Peter Bogdanovich. Mm. Uh, w- was lovers with Dorothy Stratton. Oh, so and Bogdanovich has a wild past too, but um, so that became a big thing. And I, I think there was a, uh, a crime show called Star Ninety with Eric Roberts that had to do with her. Okay, you remember okay. that Eric I Roberts, don't. Julia Roberts' brother? Oh. Apocalypse Food is sponsored by HelloFresh. So your New Year's resolution is to actually sit down and eat dinner around the table. That's awesome. But what do you do when your schedule is totally packed? Turn to HelloFresh. HelloFresh is a meal delivery service that sends fresh farm, farm fresh, pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes right to your door. All you have to do is follow directions and dinner is served. Have you used HelloFresh, Eddie? Uh, Yes, I have, and it's great. I love it. Uh, like like the uh, ad copy says, mm-hmm. you know, if I'm really in a rush, I use HelloFresh mm-hmm. and the meals are, are ready to go. Heat them up and mm-hmm. just, uh, and then eat them. Yeah, my kids love it because it's a, it's a departure from boiled potatoes, which, uh, <laughs> you know, we got a lot of Irish in the family. We love the boiled potatoes. But... Right, right, right. Well, you come from the Irish potato famine, and mm-hmm. I'm telling you, the Irish... During that potato famine, if HelloFresh was around, that there, there might have not been as many deaths. I feel like the Irish people would drink less if HelloFresh <laughs> would have existed well, during those times. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Uh, but, uh, you know, God bless. All, all Irish stereotypes aside, go to HelloFresh.com slash pep free and use code pep free for free breakfast for life. Wow. Ooh. One breakfast item per box while the subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com. And slash bre- yeah, go ahead. Pep free. Wow. 
that is amazing because breakfast, as as everybody knows, is the most important meal of the day. Yes. Except if you're me, because I get up around noon. Right. So right, for me, right. lunch is key. Oh yeah, and you lunch can have is key. with HelloFresh, you can have breakfast, lunch, or dinner at any time during there you the go. day, whenever you're ready. Go to HelloFresh.com slash PepFree with code PepFree. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Oh. I know Julia Roberts. <laughs> I know I know her well. I do too. Uh, we had a we had a couple of comments on the uh, the recent Flappers performance that we posted. We did. Yeah. yeah now, the, by the way, I I want it. This is for Patreon. Yes. Members that we want to start, you know, including more Patreon members, and we want to encourage people to become Patreon members. Uh, what is the uh, website? And by the way, this barking that you hear is Dorothy Stratton's dog. Yes. Yeah. No, you know, I'm kidding. We always keep her around. I don't mean <laughs> I don't mean to be disrespectful. I. But uh, you know, I'm just trying to tie it all together. But uh, Patreon members, uh, they got a set. And where, where do they go to become a Patreon member? Yeah, Patreon.com slash Eddie Pepitone. Five or 20. Yeah, five bucks gets you uh, almost everything uh, on that. Uh, and then sometimes we'll throw the, the $20 special events. But right. yeah, Max, Max got you again. He, uh, Max, Fucking Max. He, uh, he, I posted a what set. He writes, I like that there's always a stain on Eddie's shirt that progressively drives throughout the show. <laughs> and then some. And then, Is that true? That's so funny. And then Ted Etheridge goes completely dry by the end. <laughs> you see, and that's the great comments we get. Nothing at all about the set itself, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? Nothing about no, no. but just about a water stain that's or right. club soda, whatever it was. <laughs> I remember when I was editing that, I saw that. I was just, it's like. You uh, saw it too. Uh, it's like when uh, Bart Simpson says, eat my shorts, man. It's like, you know, when you've got a stain on your shirt. Yeah. It's like, he's doing it. He's doing the thing. He's doing. It's the signature Eddie Pepitone uh, shirt stain. Uh, yeah. That it, it just nice. We had uh, Ted, Eth uh, Ted Etheridge always said, also said, great set. Thanks for sharing. Hope to catch you the next time you come through the Southeast. And uh, Andrew said, what a terrible crowd. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew said, what a terrible, what a crowd. terrible crowd. They were a shitty crowd. Yeah. More or less. Mm -hmm. I, I shouldn't really, I shouldn't, uh, I shouldn't fucking say they were a shitty crowd. It, it, but they were. And Marco, they were a little fucking what? Marco North, he, he liked your crowd work. Where you, uh, you go? Is that a New York Giants shirt, sir? She goes, ma'am. You yeah, go, that's right, Chicago Bears. <laughs> a shock, yeah, that's right, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> I, I was laughing so hard. In, yeah, in my I mistook room. a uh, woman for a man. Yep. Very butch haircut, like broad shoulders, and a Chicago Bear T-shirt. Come on. What do you want from me? And but I recovered beautifully when she said it's ma'am. I said I just looked at her, turned around, and said "fuck it." <laughs> yes, you go. You go something like that. You go. My crowd work is the worst. Oh, that's right. <laughs> it was great. I just said my. So anyway, if you're a Patreon member, these are the incredible mm -hmm. uh, things you could have. Yeah, we had a, we had a couple of re prayer requests. Uh, what from Pastor Pepitone? There oh, was, okay. Should we start the show with that? I mean, I mean, start the show. We've been starting this show. Oh, you know what? I have to do. I, I do have to answer one question that was directed at me, which was how. Uh, let's wait till the plane. Yeah, yeah. Wait for the plane. Waiting for the, the plane. plane, boss. <laughs> uh, Jesse, hold on. No, it's <laughs> you. Actually, waited until it was worse. Okay. I mean, the, you know, the technology on these microphones is so good. You know, people think we could be in a studio for all people know. Uh, but, yeah, what uh, Jesse asked how many jobs I've had. Well, who said that? Jesse, one of our patrons. Uh, he, how many jobs have you how had? How many jobs I've had. Okay, what, yeah. Uh, Did, I think we've talked about a bunch of your jobs. I'm, let me try to name some of them. Yes. Uh, you, were, uh, you worked for... T-Mobile. Yep. Mm -hmm. Were you a manager there? I was a manager, and I uh, okay. yeah, I was a manager there for a long time. T-Mobile. You worked at Wells Fargo. I did work at Wells Fargo as a subprime mortgage broker. Yep. That cracks me up. <laughs> 
You should have been dragged away. No, no. The big bosses obviously should should be dragged away in cuffs. Okay, what else? <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think of what else. Did you deliver pizza? I, I did deliver pizza for I'm pretty uh, good, yeah. BC's Pizza uh, for a, a period of time in college. Um, I worked at Quiznos. I was a manager at That's Quiznos. Right. You were always, and this is why you got this gig, you were always manager material. That's right. That's right. Whether it was Quiznos or uh, Wells Fargo. <laughs> well, I, that's why I grew the hair out is I was looking, I looked too trustworthy naturally. So I have to grow the hair out so I look a little more rebellious. <laughs> okay. Uh, I was a personal tra- trainer at Dan Gamble's Health and Racket Club. Boy, those days are gone. Oh, huh? yeah. That was from 1998 to 2000-ish. You did You did personal training? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was in great shape. You would have been very impressed. Serious? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, was I mean, on- you've lost a lot of weight, which I commend you. Are you still... Uh, off of the sugar, I am. I am. I'm still. I'm still holding tight to the no sugar. I do. I do. Uh, you know, misstep periodically. You know, of course, I, I fault. You know, and then I cry. You're a I, human goddamn pain. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, I was a model for Got Chocks. For what? Got Chocks. Uh, what is that? Got Chocks was a local clothing store that took out a ton of ads in the newspaper. I was also a paper boy. From the time I was like eleven to fifteen, um, and uh, yeah, so I, would I did the paperboy thing really briefly, really briefly. Uh, you know, I, you know, I, I just realized as I'm saying this because I quit the paperboy job because it was exhausting. I had to ride a bike and deliver the new and I at and four a.m. I, I forget. I don't think it was that early. Oh. But I remember just leaving all the newspapers in the woods. Dude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because I, I didn't want to fucking do it. And and then I quit. They got me, you know. <laughs> that's that's the ultimate paper boy move though. Yeah. Like, and then But you, I but I at least I realized this is not yeah. for me. You so, know? And then people call because you know, if you deliver a hundred papers, you'll get calls from probably ten or twelve people. Hey, where's my paper? They go, oh, hey, I delivered it. I don't know. I, I'm not sure. And, the, the, and uh, I was such a consummate liar. <laughs> like I've always been a good liar. <laughs> not to brag. There's a there's a correlation <laughs> between uh, I think a, a gentle heart and lying. <laughs> like to be like just like I don't know, man. I'm so sorry. I uh, you, I don't, I don't uh, know that correlation. <laughs> but what else? What other jobs? We're kind of getting off track here. Well, uh, I worked so after. Uh, after the paper route, I worked at Tony Roma's, uh, which is a rib spot. I know. I know. I remember that in New York. That was a big deal for a while. Tony Ro- is, Are they still around? They are still around. They're That's still- unbelievable. <clears throat> yeah, there's still one in my... in my uh, the, the one I worked at is still around. Oh, my God. In Fresno? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was a busboy, and uh, the Mexican guys used to always make fun of me, but I spoke enough Spanish to hear them talking shit. <laughs> yes. So then I would just kind of laugh along. Yeah, uh, and then uh, yeah, I fell on my ass, and I thought I broke my tailbone uh, one time, and so they sent oh, me home. Shit. And then I told them I was fine, and they said, "Don't worry about coming back." I guess I was a, a risk at that point. I wonder why they said, "Don't worry about coming back." <laughs> I think I, I was only working there for like six months, but I think because yeah. I was so quick to think I had an injury, and I, I was <laughs> they like, were like. Look, like, like they immediately had a meeting about you. Yeah. And they were like, look, this kid thinking, he was, he was already saying, I broke my tailbone. Uh-huh. We need to get rid of Tinkin. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then I worked at Apple uh, right before I moved here, and then I transferred to here. What did you do at Apple? I was what's called an expert. So I uh, Not the genius part. Well, the expert is the... Oh my gosh. Wow. Sp- we just had a squirrel. <laughs> I didn't know what that was. A squirrel <laughs> fell from the tree. And folks, again, you only get this type of podcast from a podcast like this one where we were kicked out of a studio. That's right. That's right. But we're guys who live on our wits. Yes. Yes. <laughs> we did have a listener volunteer a studio. We us. did talk yes. about that a little bit. Yeah. Did my, you tell me about that? I didn't. I got the message uh, a few days ago uh, from uh, this guy Flash. Uh-huh. His name is Flash. He's an amazing guy. 
and uh, he has a studio. He said if we if we needed to use it, he saw us in the rain, and he felt I think he felt compelled, you know, and he saw the the sadness in our eyes. But I felt you know pure joy in that. But, rain. No, the sadness in my eyes has been there since I was an infant. Oh really? Yeah. Wow, that's that's rough. <laughs> I, I, what I'm saying is that it might be genetic. Ah, I see. I see. So, yeah, so Apple, and then I worked at an outside salesman for a, an alarm company. And that's, that's I think, just about all the actual outside jobs. Outside salesman for an alarm company. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and I would go to, and I'd go to try to sell, uh, sell alarms to companies. And then I remember one guy, he goes, he goes, we have dog. We don't. I was in uh, in uh, Glendale, and it was this Armenian guy, and he turned a corner, and there was these two huge dogs, and he's like, they don't feel anything. They're here all night. They can, they. I don't need. And I was like, this oh. was for what now? It was, it was for an alarm. I was oh, selling right. an alarm to a car dealership, <laughs> and this guy was like, hello, Charlotte. We have dogs. Charlotte, by the way, I, I hope you can see her now. Can they see? I her? don't think they can see her. You'd have to pick her up, I think. Oh, uh, can you hold this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come here, baby. They need, oh, oh, the baby. Yeah, this is my girlie. This is my girlie, Charlotte. Right, Charlie? Charlie, what did you think of Barbie getting snubbed at the Oscars? I don't think it's right. I don't think it's right. Yeah, you're my baby. You're my baby. Uh... Yeah, did you see? Okay, Charlotte, we're gonna drop you. <laughs> I, you know, I missed. I completely missed the Oscar. I was working, and I pop into the bar to There's watch no a little o- bit. There was no Oscars yet. Oh, I mean, uh, what? What the other thing? The Golden, Golden Globe. Golden yeah, yeah, Globes, it yeah. sucked. Uh, all the award shows kind of suck, but there is a. We talked about it a little. Just that fucking. There is kind of a draw. Draw to like fame. There's a, there is a, what is it? There is an allure. A, yeah, an allure. A, a siren song. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of sirens around here. And, oh yeah. Uh, most of them going to pick up people who've been brutalized. Uh, <laughs> usually by significant others. Sometimes uh, just random brutalization. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Hello. Welcome to Detective Frank Jones Grammar School Commencement Speech. Look, kids, you're about you're about nine now. You're about to go into whatever it is, high school, whatever you do. And I just want to say, be careful for random brutalization. And uh, random brutalization is a kind of nice way of saying. We don't take care of our citizens here, and they're completely lost their mind. They have five or six different selves, one of them usually violent. Some of them wind up in the Angeles Forest or in the Angeles Mental Institution, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Anyway, I'm uh, Frank Johnson, detective. (laughs) And I just want you kids to know your future's bleak. Hmm? Very bleak. <laughs> thank you, students, for coming out of this graduation today. And thank you, Detective, for sharing some of your uh, life experience with the students. Let here. me tell you my jobs. Uh, yes. Floor sander and floor hardwood floor sander and hardwood floor installer. And uh, give us the age that you were uh, uh, roughly. Oh, uh, that was later. That was like... Uh, uh, Late twenties, early thirties. Okay, okay. And I would go to acting class, and this is true. And I probably talked about this. I don't remember what the fuck I've talked about anymore. Ah, screw. I mean, we're this is one hundred and three episodes today. Is it one hundred and third? Yep. One hundred and three. Wow. We have been pumping them out. Have we missed a week yet? Not once. Not once. Not once. Boy, we should miss a bunch of weeks. I know. I know. We got we've built up a lot of goodwill with these people. It's time to disappoint. You know, it's time to start the disappointment with these folks. Uh <clears throat> they've been getting off. Well, easy. what I fear about missing weeks is that we we get no response from it. Like, where are you at? <laughs> Nothing. No, they do. When I even when I'm a little late, 
uh, uh, on putting out the video or something for like yeah. we had yeah. my power went out last week and so I was sitting there in the middle of editing and my whole system went dead. Oh, and I thought you were lying now because I'm such a liar. <laughs> I always suspect other people uh-huh. of lying. Because I thought you were lying because. You were like run down, or or you had gotten high, whatever. <laughs> that you didn't want to do it that night. You were gonna yeah. push it, but it really did, your power went out. It really did go out. Yeah, it was out from like six to ten thirty. And what uh, happened? <clears throat> was it oh, windy? It was, the, it was the rain because it was the day we recorded in the rain. Oh, I'll right. tell you what, the 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 domino stacked up that week because we were supposed to record on like a Thursday and right. it rained, and then we kept pushing it back, and then finally. That's right. It was the, right. the day before the pod, and it was raining. Right, and right, we're like, right. we're fucking doing this. We're It's raining. Who cares? And I, I, I loved it. Yeah, and it I, was a good one. We have a real spirit of, uh, yeah. you know, uh, we, we Well, we the great pioneers in this country, they podcasted while, uh, you know, being in mm-hmm. in horrific conditions. Oh, yeah. The, one of the original podcasts was uh, the Donners before. <laughs> The Donner Party, and it was just originally the Donner Party was about having parties. Yep. Like those people were big mm-hmm. partiers; mm-hmm. they drank a lot. And then the Donner Party became about having to eat each other in a crisis. I mean, that's the whole thing about this industry. You know, you do one thing wrong, and that's where the focus goes. Well, they tried to go through what now is known as the Donner Path. Yep. Mm-hmm. It was a bad move. Not a great move. They Not didn't have move. GPS. Mm-hmm. And they didn't miss an episode until they had to eat their producer. They had to eat <laughs> everybody. Yeah. And then then the podcast sort of just came to a halt. <laughs> so you were saying you were du- you were sanding hardwood sanding and installing hardwood floors and then right. you would go to your acting class. I would have dust coming off and this is a fucking true story. I would have dust coming off me mm-hmm. in acting class. That was kind of a uh I would say that was a low point for me yeah in terms of like what the fuck is is going on but well approaching 30 and going to acting class and still working a regular job yeah. i mean that can be uh that can but, be emotionally but a construction straining. job yeah. a construction job at that and on your hands and knees you know it's backbreaking work with the sanding of a floor you know, I got tinnitus from that job. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, uh, which is the ringing of the ears because the machines were so loud and my fucking asshole boss didn't provide us yeah. with the right protection for our ears. Mm-hmm. He gave us, he was like, just put this gum in your ears. <laughs> and it was Wrigley's Spearmint and Ooh. it was good gum. but It can burn though. What? It can burn, though, in a sensitive area like your ear canal. It just didn't help much. Yeah. It wasn't gum, but it was, you know, shitty ear things. Oh, this is true. I'm not kidding. He really gave you, you had tinnitus, and he goes, put these earplugs in. I got tinnitus because I didn't have the, and it's never gone away, and I, I go to ear doctors, and they have no fucking idea. They, they, they all go, yeah, we don't have a cure for tinnitus. I'm like, well, then what makes you an ear doctor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you can't even do that, uh, so you were you were sanding floors in your I late thirties. I did that. I waited tables a lot. Yes, until I was forty. Yeah, yeah, and I was the worst waiter. <laughs> you know, you, it, it, I mean, Max or whoever. You know, a couple of people on Patreon saw me with stains. I would go up to tables with stained shirts. And I, and I worked in some high-end places because a couple of my friends would get me these jobs. Yes, yes. Like actor friends. You know, it's a rite of passage for a lot of actors to mm-hmm. wait tables. It's fucking horrible. <laughs> it is. It is. <clears throat> And since the manufacturing base of this country, since NAFTA, since the great Bill Clinton, who's a piece of shit and always was, mm-hmm. sold the worker down the, down the, the river mm-hmm. by um, enacting NAFTA, which a lot of companies <clears throat> then went and uh, did their manufacturing overseas, people have to work uh, service jobs. But anyway, I was working as a waiter and... Uh, 
I would like sneak food in the stairwells. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I would uh, then drip stains. Like one time I, I worked at a French steakhouse called Cité. Ooh. And I would, I would have like profiteroles, which were puff pastries with vanilla ice cream oh. and chocolate syrup. Oh and I would God. come to the tables with chocolate syrup <laughs> dripping <laughs> down my shirt. And this would be a high-end place. <laughs> and Can I recommend the, the chocolate? <laughs> You're like coming over, and um, I remember my manager just pulling me. Eddie, could you come here in the middle of me talking to a table? And she said, "What the fuck?" It was a woman. <laughs> she was like, "What the fuck is going on with your shirt?" <laughs> and I was like, "I'm sorry, I had a profiterole." <laughs> and she was like, "That's." The profiteroles are not for the waiters, Eddie. <laughs> and I'd be like, they should be. <laughs> and if I, if this place was a union and I was the union head, I would say, men, ladies, if I'm your union head, if you elect me, we're going to have profiteroles in the staircase. <laughs> in the staircase. <laughs> At all times. At all fucking times. Oh, I love Apocalypse Suit is sponsored by Tushy. Eddie, do you wear that? Yes, I am. Uh, Tushy uh, sent me a bidet, the Tushy right. bidet. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know how to put this. Uh, I, I don't mean to be gross here, but my ass is so clean. Yeah. You know, when a cop pulls me over and goes, <laughs> watch your ass and keep your ass clean, I go, well, thanks to Tushy, officer. That's right. I am keeping my ass clean and... <laughs> You know, I don't have to watch my ass as much. And you may think that you're a super clean person, but if you go to the bathroom and just smear poop around with the toilet paper all day, how hygienic are you really? The Tushy oh, Bidet is... You got that right. I, I re you know, smearing toilet paper, I used to use it for makeup. Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, clown, like I was a brown clown, I called it. The brown clown? The brown clown. <laughs> Uh, but now with the Tushy Bidet, I am clean as a whistle. Yeah, it's fantastic. Not only will you feel way cleaner throughout the day, but Tushy's going to save you some serious money. The typical Tushy go user goes through 75% less toilet paper on average, which is great for your wallet and for the environment. Oh, oh my God. I've put enough money aside to buy a little house in the Poconos. Oh, I'm so happy for Just you. Just the toilet paper savings, you know? <laughs> Uh, get that fresh out of the shower feeling at hellotushy.com for a limited time. Our listeners get 10% off of your entire order. 10%. All you have to do is use the code PEP at checkout. That's 10% off your hellotushy.com with promo code PEP. Right. And seriously, uh, guys, particularly, I think women know bidets are awesome, but they are awesome. Mm -hmm. You know, they are really awesome and it can lead to really nice things in your life. Yeah. Yep. It's time to back that ass up with confidence, Eddie. I <laughs> know uh, I've never had more confidence in my ass. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You yep. know James Brown used to say, shake your money maker? Oh, yeah. I used to shake it and there would be spatterings all over the wall, like <laughs> like blood, like blood, sort of like blood spatterings after a murder. Yeah. Like if you've seen The Staircase, yeah, it would be that type of thing. Go to hellotushy.com and use code PEP at checkout for 10% off. Yeah. Nice. Oh, I love I love watching it cuz I've, you know, been around clubs, you mm -hmm. know, for a while the I seeing a couple of wait staff will see a, an unfinished drink and just go ahead and take care of it right there, you know, make sure that they empty all the liquid out of the glasses before they go back to the uh, the kitchen to drop it off and Oh yeah. Uh, I, that always cracks me up. It just makes me laugh to just the idea of somebody who's working <laughs> And they're just like, oh, shit, they didn't finish their Glenn Livet here. I got to yeah, take that. Yeah. I was never a big drinker. I used to get high during work, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One time, I, I had a brief flirtation with cocaine. Yeah. And, and luckily, cocaine and me did not mix. And I remember doing cocaine. Fernando, the busboy. No, he was a waiter. Fernando was a really slick dude who sold the waiters cocaine during shifts and i remember 
doing cocaine during a shift and I had a huge party come in, let's say like, I don't know, like 20 people and I had to bring 20 waters and I had just done cocaine <laughs> and I just, the waters just <laughs> flew. Luckily, it was only water and it just flew all over everybody and I, I was, I was like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm on cocaine. I'm all coked up. <laughs> I'm all coked up. I, I, I'm going through my glam rock period. My glam rock period. I, I just saw Bowie, Ziggy, Sod, Stardust. <laughs> the, the, your, your manager, Eddie, what the hell is Eddie, going on with you? Are you coked up? And I'm like, yeah. They got, they got profiteroles rolls and cocaine in the stairwell. I'm telling you, if I'm your union leader of this restaurant, there's going to be cocaine and profiteroles <laughs> all during your shift. <laughs> because our job is not to completely be of service. It's also to have a good fucking time and keep morale up oh, with man. ice cream and cocaine. <laughs> I mean, they, they are the peanut butter and jelly of the service industry, you know. I think so many people. I'm, I'm not sure if they still do, but, oh, my God, the amount of partying that was going on in restaurants. But that was, I don't know, that was the 80s, 90s, um, you know. Well, I've heard a lot of people are, because uh, there was that big fentanyl scare. I've never done it. I'm terrified. I'm an addictive person. Oh, no, person. you don't ever do, which one? Cocaine. Yeah, uh, cocaine. Ice if cream. you do coke <laughs> now, you're an idiot. Yeah. Because of fentanyl. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unless unless you get it from this guy I know, <laughs> Nick. Oh, I I got a cocaine uh, story. Oh, let's hear it. So my buddy got a lead. This is when I was selling those uh, those alarms to companies. And he goes into a warehouse. He's got this appointment. There's nobody in the warehouse, but there's a standalone building built inside the warehouse. And he goes in there, and there's literally six guys stomping on leaves, and it smells like gasoline, and they're making cocaine. Where was in, this? This was in Burbank and in a warehouse. Was this the alarm job? This was the alarm job. And I had a buddy. He called me. He was in training. You know, I was his trainer at yeah. this time, and he was a good, good, good friend of mine. And he goes, hey, I don't know what to do. I just walked in on a bunch of guys making cocaine, and I don't know. I, I'm not going to – I don't. What's, I just don't want to get killed. And I'm like, yeah, just, of I'm course. Like, dude, just leave. Just leave and completely ignore it. And then if they call to reschedule, then pick a different location or something. And, and Hold it. <clears throat> Why was he in that place? So they made an appointment to get an alarm for the building. The cocaine guys? Yes, but apparently the guy that made the appointment was so coked out or whatever, forgot about it. And so when he showed up at the building looking for this guy, he's not there. So he's searching the building, and he walks in on this manufacturing. And he just left. And he just left. So the guy calls him back and goes, well, you don't need to come back or whatever. He's like, yeah, I couldn't find you. Totally played it off cool. Like, didn't see anything. He goes, uh, he goes, we want to get the alarm, but uh, I don't know this is a weird question, but is there any way we can get the alarm set up so that <clears throat> if there's a break-in or anything, that they don't call the cops, that it just goes straight to me? <laughs> and uh, he was like, I, I, I don't know. And then, he, you know, then I'm getting all these calls because I'm, like, training the guy. And <clears throat> I'm yeah. like, yeah, no, we have to, have to go to emergency <laughs> services. You just wanted that. to get out of. Um, yes. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, they're making it. Well, Apparently they're I, I making don't it know. What, well, I don't know about what you, I think what you guys did was a little discriminatory. <laughs> because if guys who are making cocaine or, 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 or madams or ladies making cocaine, I don't want to be sexist there. Please. If, uh, you know, both genders making cocaine, I if they want an alarm system, yep. they should be able to get one. They should be able to customize it however they like. You know, it's absolutely. Uh, it's uh, the emergency number is going to a Colombian area code for some reason. <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. Uh, <laughs> um, I wonder. I'm what I what I'm thinking about is why the fuck do they have gasoline involved in? In that process, well, the, the the apparently it's in the in the cocaine making process. There's gasoline something <laughs> involved with some sort of uh, I don't know if it's gas, but he said he could smell gas, and then he put two and two together because of a documentary he watched on Vice. <laughs> 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 that that was the cocaine manufacturing. That's very funny. <laughs> um, 
But uh, with the price of gasoline now, cocaine is skyrocketing. I mean, it's it's a real travesty. You know, with the Houthis bombing uh, the shipping industry yep. in the in the Red Sea, yep. we now have uh, the price of cocaine skyrocketing because gas. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, uh, what was one of the Patreons? What is it, Charlotte? I know, I know. Charlotte, my little puppy, has seen some doggy. But what is what was the Patreon question about? They wanted to uh, have uh, me pray for a certain. Oh um, yeah, so that was uh, mm-hmm. it. Was that they wanted you to pray? It, I think it was a reference to your mm-hmm. your set. I've got to find it here. Like pray for a celebrity. Yeah, yeah, God. Yeah. Yeah, let's do a praying for celebrities. Yeah, we we don't we, have much time left. We don't. We have been powering through this episode. Charlotte, yeah. she Charlotte, can feel Charlotte. Charlotte sees doggies, right, she, Charlotte? She can feel the pressure of Charlotte. the rising cocaine prices. We're are, going home soon, Charlotte. We're going home soon. We're almost <laughs> finished with this bullshit, Charlotte. And then All we're right. gonna go home, and we're gonna cuddle, and we're gonna play, Ooh. and we're gonna eat. We're gonna eat. We're going to cuddle, and we're going to play. <laughs> and if I'm your union leader, we, w- we would be eating, cuddling, and playing. Enough of this bullshit work. Vote for me, Frank Hoffa. <laughs> eat, cuddle, and play. All right, before the eat, cuddle, and pray, play. Hold it. We, did you get who I, I was supposed to, you know, or is it too hard to find? I think it was too, uh, too vague. I think it was like he was just doing a, uh, doing a bit. Uh, but uh, but if you're a Patreon member, we're going to start reading your comments, uh, your emails. By the way, you can email us at what email is it again? EddiePetPodcast at gmail.com. EddiePetPodcast at gmail.com. Please give us an email. We'll read it on the air. We'll, we'll delve into it. We'll parse it. We'll make fun of it. Well, you just give yeah. us some ideas. Yeah, he said, uh, so Ted Etheridge also asked for a, a lounge singer bit uh, at some point. And, uh, Ted wanted a lounge singer bit? Yeah, okay. and Jamie said, Eddie, please say a few prayers for those glam ladies and fellows. It's not fair that they, that they all can't stand and receive their awards and spew their thanks. Oh, okay. So say a prayer for say a prayer for the Golden Globes people. Yes, yes. All right, yes. or the awards people. All right, let's do it. You you intro it. And now praying for celebrities with Eddie Pepitone. God, hey Dad. Um, thank you again for a great day. Absolutely, son. I'm so glad to spend some time with my favorite boy. Okay, you sound like you're reading from copy. But <laughs> anyway, um, I I guess I should. You know, pray for celebrities. You've had a long, hard day, son, and you know we've we've had a great time, and now it's time to 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 think of others for a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So here we go, God. Um, God, please. The people at the Golden Globes I noticed were bored, and God, please help them with their boredom, because a lot of them don't want to get high and drunk. Because they might win, and then if they make a crazy fucking speech, they get in trouble. So, God, please, please make the award shows a little more entertaining. You know, because I saw Leonardo DiCaprio and Martin Scorsese and Robert De Niro looking a little bored. And and I think, oh, my God. How do these celebrities get through that? That's Mm. not good. And God, please look down on multi, multi multi-millionaire and billionaire landlords. Mm -hmm. That's right. A lot of them are having to fix apartments of people who've been a little negligent. I mean, why do they have to fix everything? Mm -hmm. These billionaire and millionaire landlords, they should be able to make as much money as they possibly can without having to fix things all the time. That's right, son. Uh, Because, you know, and, and please, God, stop these people who are living in these dwellings from suing them. And some, some are doing tenant, tenant organizations. They're organizing, they're organizing tenants and and trying to withhold rent. And God, these billionaires, I mean, they're not going to be billionaires long if they can't collect rent from these people. That's right. 
I mean, these people, a lot of them, you know, they die in their own urine, but so be it, God. That's the right. billionaires have incredible boats to maintain, mm -hmm. and they do a lot of cocaine, which is not cheap. It's made with gasoline, I understand. That's right, son. That's right. <laughs> Thank you, Dad. And God, please... Also, if you could look down on people who breed horses and make tons of money. I mean, these people, they're constantly getting hassled by animal rights people. Mm. And yes, one or two horses may perish, you know, due to neglect. But what do you want, God? What do you want? These people... They need to have very big estates in Kentucky. Mm -hmm. I mean, bluegrass does not grow on trees, God. That's why it's called bluegrass. That's right. And God, speaking of bluegrass, please, please, on the millionaire country singers like, um, oh, I wish I listened to country music. Let's say Tim McGraw. That's a good one, son. Patsy Klein. Yeah, a little don't, old, but she's great. Yeah. I don't, do you know any country people who need prayers? I well, mean, the I know real Gar popular ones. I feel like Garth Brooks has been getting a little God, bit of heat. You know, God the, Brooks. people say a lot of mean things about Mr. Brooks on the yeah. internet because he comes off as a little, a little wacky. Yeah, God, please watch over the people who are at the top of their game in the country music mm -hmm. field. Mm -hmm. Sure, they make patriot, you know, ultra nationalistic, quote unquote, patriotic songs, but mm -hmm. that's because they care about this country, God. Mm -hmm. And God, most of all, please watch over Jennifer Lopez oh. because I heard that she did a private show for a Saudi and Arabian prince and only got like 30 million, oh. and it was a half hour. Poor they should, you know, Jennifer Lopez should get more. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And don't forget about some of the big conglomerate, con con the big conglomerate. What are you right? saying, Dad? It sounds like you're slurring your speech I'm again. So I'm sorry. I'm having a bit of a stroke, but, you know, it happens. And uh, But don't forget about some of those big conglomerates that we've been looking at. You know, Disney is out okay, there. Okay, God, you know? please look after Disney. I mean, they only own most of Burbank, California, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and... And they, you know, they they have a they have a lot of top executives like Bob Iger who are barely getting by on six or seven mansions mm -hmm. across the globe. Mm -hmm. Okay, God, I hope you're listening to me because the ultra ultra rich also need your help and guidance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, God. Amen. And thanks for joining us on another Praying for Celebrities. Well, that's about it, Kevin. I think we should call this one uh, story time because, um, you know, we really got into a bunch of stories. Yeah, know? we really did. We got it. We got, it's nice to, you know, I love it when you pull the curtain back a little bit. You know what I mean? Because a lot of people see you, they, you know, they think, that guy's got it all figured out. You know, and then you go, hey, look, I was sanding floors and doing cocaine in a French steakhouse. You know, and then it kind of gives people hope. You know, they they see I'm all that. about hope. Yeah, yeah. And if you want some of this hope, you can see Eddie live. Just go over to eddiepepitone.com, and you can see all of his tour dates. And if you want more of this podcast to get some special shout-out videos from Eddie, and you want to see some exclusive stand-up clips from the man himself, go over to patreon.com slash eddiepepitone. And for 5 or $20 a month, you can get some exclusive stuff from this podcast and from Eddie himself. Uh, go over to Instagram, go over to YouTube, and search Apocalypse Soon Podcast. Please go over there and subscribe. Uh, we put this video out every week, and I throw some clips up there, so uh, we'll entertain you. Yeah, and uh, thanks again, everybody, for listening slash watching uh, Apocalypse Soon, the podcast with no upside.